Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. This week, I've got four different items for you. First, a McDonald's table beacon that's used to locate where you are when you order your food. Next, a remote ID spoofer. Remote ID is used with drones. This allows you to create a bunch of fake drones. A fault injection attack against a DJI drone using electromagnetic fault injection, fairly complex. And finally, an emulator function that was added to Ghidra. Now the McDonald's table beacon. White Rose in France has been reverse engineering one of these beacons that they managed to uh, get a hold of. It's given to you when you order your food, so you set it at your table and they can find you and bring your food out to you. It has a Bluetooth beacon inside of it and apparently some rather sophisticated uh, tracking that's used to locate exactly where it is at which table. This has also been used in the United States. A few years back, there was a Hackaday article where they showed uh, an FCC filing for one of these and the board that's inside. This one is different. This one in France it uses a different Bluetooth uh, module than the one in the US used. And so White Rose shows all the steps involved in trying to reverse engineer one of these things. It's a great read through if you want to get into reverse engineering to understand the process involved in figuring something out from identifying the different pins that are used to finding things that would be interesting to look at with the logic analyzer and then capturing that data. And now the remote ID spoofer. Remote ID is used with drones, you know, drones that fly around to broadcast out the location of the drone the location of the person operating the drone and where the drone took off. This information is broadcasted real time so that anyone with a smartphone app uh, or some other means of tracking drones can see this information and see who's flying around them. It's uh, controversial whether people actually like this technology or not, but it was mandated by the FAA that all drones had to have it. Now, this spoofer uses an ESP8266. It was written by someone named Jet. They go by Jet. And it will transmit fake drone packets to make it look like a bunch of drones are flying around whatever location you say. When you first turn it on, it allows you to enter in your GPS coordinates or whatever GPS coordinates you want. And the drones will all appear to fly around that area. Now, likely uh, this is illegal to use. I'm fairly certain that the FAA would have a problem with this, but nonetheless, it exists and, and you can uh, take a look at it. Josh Bardwell has a video demonstrating how this works, where he shows all these drones being broadcasted and picked up by his phone. Now, I imagine in the future, as tools like this are, are out there more and people get creative with it, that we'll hear, uh, we'll hear about something like this being used in the future in the news as a swarm of drones that approached a facility and then magically vanished. Kind of like a Mission Impossible type scenario. Now let's talk a little bit about drone fault injection. So IOActive is a company that does security testing and they have some write-ups that they put out on a blog and one of them was on using electromagnetic fault injection to try to take a DJI Mavic drone and cause a fault and try to get some information from it. Maybe extract some keys or get the firmware or privileged access to, to run uh, some software on there that you're not supposed to run. Now they chose DJI drones because uh, they believe that they're one of the more secure drones that are out there. They have signed encrypted firmware and things like that. What struck me as interesting about this paper is that IOActive is a rather well-funded organization it looks like and they're using products by Riskier which uh, don't list any prices on their website so we can gather that they're really expensive um, and even with all of this tooling and expertise uh, it was incredibly hard to actually get the DJI drone to give up any information uh, their first attack trying to figure out um, and sniff for encryption keys didn't really turn up anything fruitful and their second one did allow them to change some memory addresses in a drone by inducing a fault at the right time, uh, which theoretically would allow them to, to create some kind of exploit, but they didn't go any 
any steps beyond that. Perhaps in a future write-up they will. The paper is very well done though. It shows you all the steps that they went through and the different kinds of products that are out there from these XYZ tables that precisely place these electromagnetic sniffers and fault injection style devices to all the other software and things they have to write to actually create these attacks and, and try, to, try to make them work. It's no small feat for sure, and it's definitely worth reading the paper. And finally, one of the newer releases of Ghidra actually has the ability to emulate the files that you open up. So when you open up a binary with Ghidra, you can do static analysis, which means you can look at it, you can disassemble it, and you can see what the code is that, that was written. Um, but a lot of times what you want to do is you'd like to run that code and see what's happening inside of the computer. What values are loaded into different registers, what's actually in the memory when this program is running. Now, Craig Young has a nice post walking you through this new functionality and how to make use of it with the sample binary that he provides. He walks you through every single step of how to load it in. Well, he kind of assumes you know how to load it in, but once you've loaded it in, he walks you through the steps involved to actually start an emulation of it, where, to, where the start point is in the code, how to get there, how to then start the, the emulation, where to look in memory, how to find that spot to see a hidden message that's part of the binary. You can't see it in the static analysis, but when you run it and it loads some values into memory, by going to that memory location, you can see the message. It's a pretty powerful tool that they released in Ghidra. It's definitely worth checking out. If you haven't used Ghidra, follow the steps exactly as he says, and maybe watch a video beforehand on how to load in different software into Ghidra for different kinds of analysis. It's fun to play around with. His sample program is fairly small, um, but if you click in some wrong spot or in some wrong thing, it can feel pretty confusing. But I ran through it, it was, it was great. Maybe the third time through, once I got it figured out. Now as always, you can find me over on Discord with about 750 other people, all chatting about reverse engineering. There's a Richesum Wiki. If you have projects, you wanna share things you're working on, feel free to create an account there and share your projects so other people can check them out, see what you're working on, see pictures of things, maybe see inside some device that they've never seen before. If you have any stories you think would be interesting to share or stuff in the future, you can catch me hash at richesum.com or on Twitter at bitbangingbytes. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next week on Reverse Engineering News.